Agora TV. The world is thinking. Gossip turns out to be a fascinating thing to study. One of these things which has been uh, uh, not been very seriously studied, but uh, needs to be and is starting to be studied from an evolutionary perspective. So I have some uh, papers on this. And when you look empirically at how gossip takes place in a small-scale society, what you find out is that it's, it's very highly moralistic. And there's two kinds of gossip. There's gossiping for self-serving purposes. And then there's gossiping basically on behalf of the group. And the moral norms are such is that gossiping for self-serving purposes is something that you're really not supposed to do. And typically, this regulates itself pretty well in a small-scale society, but that's not necessarily the case in a large-scale society. And so I'd like to use this opportunity to, to introduce a concept which was not part of my lecture. That is the concept of mismatch, evolutionary mismatch, that anything that evolves, whether by genetic or cultural evolution, is only adaptive against the context of the environment that, in which it evolved. That's the environment of evolutionary adaptedness. And if you put it in a different environment, then all bets are off. And so I think some of, the, some of the manifestations of gossip, which are, as you say, destructive, are often taking place in a larger context in which it's not being regulated as it should. It's basically it's the cultural equivalent of immune system dysfunction. We know that there's immune system um, diseases, which is basically the immune system malfunctioning. And it's a form of friendly fire. I think that is also the case with various forms of gossip and why, for example, gossip is exploited commercially. If you look at all the tabloids, you know, all that stuff about the celebrities, we just can't get enough of it because we have this hunger for this kind of social information. And that can be exploited by, um, um, uh, by, by consumerism.